Saturday in Lent, for the first week of Lent, uh, the long mass of Denver Saturday. I'm going to be here in uh, Veneta, in Oregon, when the Father, Son, and the Ghost Amen. <clears throat> the very last, we have the four, the four ember days throughout the year. One of them always falls in the season of Lent, of course, you'd be, so, and uh, this is the, the one here in Lent. <clears throat> and of course, in the ember days, we have so always six epistles. And the fifth one is always the same. The first four change, and number six changes. But the fifth one is always the same. It's always the hymn of the story of the three young men in the fiery furnace. So four times throughout the year, we ask God to come and help us and to partake of our material needs. And that the four, three young men in the fiery furnace, they were the ones uh, who were standing in front of King Nebuchadnezzar and Ebenezer told them to worship a false god. It was a 60-foot statue of a god uh, put before them, the statue of Nebuchadnezzar himself, and they were to worship that statue, and they refused. They told the king, the three young boys, the friends of Daniel, they told the king that they refused to worship that statue. And the king said, if you don't worship the statue when you hear the ringing of the bell and the trumpets, <coughs> then you will be thrown in the fiery furnace. <coughs> and the three young men said back to the to the to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O oh, great king, we don't need you to wait for the bells to ring or for the trumpets to play or the drums to sound. Don't need to wait because we will never worship the false god or any false god, but only the true god, our god of our fathers. And you may cast us in the fiery furnace if you wish, and we, will, we may burn. But if you don't repent of your ways, you will burn forever. And the three young men that defied the king became exceedingly angry had the furnace heated to seven times hotter than it normally was, and with great haste they heated it, and he had the three young boys thrown into the fire. And we read this every time there's an ember day. So there's six epistles, and then there's the gospel. The gospel changes, <coughs> epistle number six changes, the five readings, the four readings before change, but always <coughs> this reading is the same. The three young men in the fiery furnace. Also, if I got the three young men in the fiery furnace, but if you look at the front of every missile, every missile on the altar before Vatican II, including this missile on the altar here, every missile for at least the last 500 years and probably more, but at least the last 500 years, every missile has the prayers of the priest after Mass. And the, pra and the prayers of thanksgiving that are recommended, one of the principal prayers recommended is simply to read the prayer of the three young men in the fiery furnace. And so it's in every single missile in the, in, in the, in the Saudi Romano of at least the last 500 years. Prayers to be said in Thanksgiving after Mass. Fire and heat, praise the Lord. Eyes and snow, praise the Lord. Ye sons of, of Israel, praise the Lord. And the long praising of the Lord of the, from, the, from the book of Daniel, these three young men were thrown in the fiery furnace. And so it's interesting how in the days of fast, when we're asking God, to come and help us in the time of difficulty. And, of course, at Mass, after we received the Holy Sacrifice, the received Holy Communion, and now Mass is concluded, what should be in the heart of us as we walk away from Mass, and what should be in the heart of us as we're put into a great fight, and we're told, you either worship the false god, you either follow the Antichrist, you either disobey the laws of God and eat the swine's flesh in the, in the Old Testament, will violate the law of God in, in some grave way in the New Testament, and the saints stood up against it. And when they did, what came in their hearts was the prayer of the three young men. And so this prayer must be, in the eyes of God, and the eyes of the church, a very sacred prayer. It's good to read it during this time of Lent. In the, in the book of Daniel, the prayer of the three young men in the fiery furnace. And we read it four times a year. In the, in, in the Mass of Saturday, the Ember Saturday, this is one of the four Ember Saturdays, that we read this, this epistle of six epistles, always number five. And so what is so important about this holy epistle? There are three young men, the three, the three young men are thrown in the fiery furnace, and they refuse to disobey God's law, and they believe they're going to be slain. And they're thrown in the fiery furnace, when they're thrown in the furnace, the fire comes and burns away their bands. They are, they are tied together, their ropes are tied to them. The fire comes and burns away their handcuffs. The fire also comes 
and burns the soldiers to a crisp that threw them into the fire. The fire that was made to destroy the three young men destroyed the handcuffs that they were, and the, the bands about their feet and hands. The fire destroyed the soldiers that were around them. And they landed in the midst of the fire. And the fathers tell us the fire that was in their heart was more powerful than the fire of the furnace. And when the fire of the divine love of the heart and the fire of faith in the heart of the three young men met the fire of the furnace, the fire of the furnace stepped aside. The fire of the furnace moved away because it couldn't be with the fire that was in their heart. Therefore, the fire moved away and it did not harm the three young men. They landed in the midst of the furnace and they stood up. And the fire was in a wall around them. And they then said, fire and heat, bless the Lord. Ye sun and moon, bless the Lord. Ye mountains and valleys, bless the Lord. And it's a very long prayer in which all the parts of God's universe, the angels in heaven, all mankind, and everything to bless the Lord. And so they ask all things to bless the Lord. Right? And one thing after another. And so they ask all things to bless the Lord without any ceasing. And that's the prayer of the three young men. What's the occasion of that prayer? When they are assaulted. What's the occasion of the prayer when a priest celebrates all the sacraments of the Mass, or the faithful, the faithful attend the Mass? After Mass, the priest says at the end of the Mass, Ite Nisai Est. Go, it is sent. Go, the Mass. Go, the faith. Go, Christ on the cross. Go, the Blessed Sacrament is sent into the world. Now, what world is it sent into? It is a world of fire. A world that wants to burn up the faith, to burn up the Blessed Sacrament, to burn up all things that come from Christ. It's a world that hates Christ. That's the world you're going into. Ite Nisai Est. So as you enter that world, the three young men entered into the world in which they were hated. They were going to be put to death because of the worship of the true God and their refusal to worship a false god. And therefore, they end up in the furnace. And if we are going to carry Christ out into the world, we're going to also have to end up in a furnace. They're going to burn us. They're going to attack us. They're going to assault us. They're going to try to destroy us. And what happened to the three young men? The fire that tried to burn them did not burn them. It burnt their handcuffs. It burnt their feet uh, shackles. And it burnt the soldiers, that assault that were throwing them in the fire. Because in the fire of divine love, and the fire of faith, and the fire of what should happen inside of our hearts when we receive the Blessed Sacrament, we receive our Lord so often, we receive our Lord so often throughout our lives, once is a great number, and we receive our Lord many more times than once. We receive Him all over all of our lives. Remember, Simeon held the Lord in his heart and in his hands for only a few minutes once in his life. And to be able to hold Christ for maybe a minute, maybe two minutes, he had to wait many years. And then he died after he held Him. And so that he considered it worthwhile to wait 30, 40, 50 years to hold Christ for only a few moments. And then he died. Nunc dimiti servum tuum domine. Now dismiss thy servant of the Lord according to thy word in peace. And so we must recognize what comes from this holy blessed sacrament. There must be a peace of the heart that comes with the blessed sacrament. There must be a fire inside of us that burns greater than the fire of hatred, the fire of the violence of the world, the fire of the assaults of the enemy, the fire of hell. There is a fire that burns more powerfully than that fire, and it is the fire of Christ. And when this fire is inside of us, and we go out into a world filled with wicked fire, the fire moves aside. The fire cannot harm us. That's the reason why St. Lawrence, the one who converted Rome, a deacon, lying on the gridiron, as his body was being burnt by the fire, he laughed. He told jokes. He was filled with great joy. He did not feel, he felt physical pain, but he felt the greatest of all interior joy because they weren't touching his heart. The heart that was on a fire, had fire, greater than the fire of the flames that burnt him because he had the fire of the divine faith and the divine love of our Lord inside of him. The church recommends that we read this prayer of the three young men after receiving Holy Communion. The church makes it part of our prayer when we're asking to survive in this world. Because the reality is, if you're a Catholic, if you're a follower of Christ, a true follower of Christ in the world, you're going to meet Nebuchadnezzar when he was wicked 
because later on he became holy and died a saint. You're going to meet soldiers who want you to be burnt up and destroyed. You're going to meet a world that wants you to burn incense to false idols. And you're going to be, if you refuse those things, they will threaten to throw you in the fiery furnace and to consume you in this world. That's what happens. That's what's going to happen if you follow Christ. And hence you remember the three young men. They were thrown in the fiery furnace. They were, they were thrown in, but they were not burnt. They were not harmed. And furthermore, they praised God. Now what happened at the end of their praising of God? Two things happened. One of them was Nebuchadnezzar converted. The very wicked king who threw them in the furnace out of pride and idolatry, when he saw the three young men saved by the fire, he converted. That's one thing that happened during that, three, that furnace. The one who put the three young men in the furnace converted. Another thing that happened is a fourth man came in the fire. And King Nebuchadnezzar walked over to the fire and he said, Didn't we throw three of you in the fire? Behold, now there are four young men in the fire. And the fourth one was the angel that protected them. The guardian angel came and praised with them. So they received, they were never alone in the fire. They had angelic help. And so it is with us. We are told to go out into the world, and sometimes it appears as though we are all alone. We're being assaulted by our friends, assaulted by our enemies, and assaulted by people who don't care. We are find our, our faith is assaulted on every side, and we feel alone. But in fact, we're not alone. The angels are always there protecting us. And the spirit of the three young men should be inside of us. So we're going to go to battle. We're going to go to war. We're going to experience difficulties. But what should be in our heart when it happens? There was a great joy in the heart of the three young men. And there was a desire to praise. And that's what they did. They praised. They didn't let the anger of the king. And they didn't let the wickedness of the soldiers or the heat of the fire prevent them from praising God. And so their first reaction when they landed in the fire and realized we're still alive. Their first reaction was not to flee the fire. Let's get out of here lest it burns us. No. Their first reaction was to speak to the fire and say, fire and heat, bless the Lord. To look up and see the sun and the stars and say, sun and stars and clouds, bless the Lord. And to look with their eyes upon the entirety of the universe and speak to all of it to bless the Lord. And this is the difference between the followers of God, the true God, the followers of Christ in the true church, the Holy Roman Catholic Church, those that really carry the blessed sacrament truly inside of their hearts. This is the difference of how they meet world of fire and how they meet a wicked tyrant than the way that others do. We must remember that our faith destroys the enemies. The wicked tyrant would repent. The soldiers were burnt to a crisp. Not everyone repents. Not everyone goes to heaven. But the three young men had the desire that all repent, and the three young men spoke to God and praised God inside the furnace, and hence in every one of the four times of the year, the Quatuor Templar Temporibus, the, the Quatuor Temporarum, the, the four times of the year that we have the call of the Ember Days, we have this fourth epistle always reminding a short version of the prayers of the three young men. Also on Sunday, on Sunday Lauds, every Sunday at Lauds, we have a brief part of the th prayer of the three young men. Always the three young men. And we, re we, re and we read Sunday Lauds more than any other office in the, in the entirety of the divine office. It's the most commonly read, most frequently read on all Sundays and also on feast days. So the three young men are with us so frequently. Every Sunday we read their prayer. The church recommends that we read it after the receiving Holy Communion. It is read every time we have the four seasons of the season of Lent, I mean the, uh, the four ember days, such as today, always on the Saturday, always the fifth lesson, though the other lessons change. And so it must be important that the church makes us repeat it so often that the heart and spirit of the three young men should be inside of us. And we pray that it is, as we, when we find ourselves in a time of battle and conflict, a time of difficulty, and at all times of our lives, to carry the divine faith, the divine truth, the divine love with the spirit of the three young men who bless the Lord, bless all things to bless him. And we'll close with that. And God bless you all. And the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.